May 28th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Romans chapter 10 from the New Testament. Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God on behalf of my fellow Israelites is for their salvation. For I can testify that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not in line with the truth. For ignoring the righteousness that comes from God and seeking instead to establish their own righteousness, they did not submit to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law, with the result that there is righteousness for everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness that is by the law. The one who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes, and thus has righteousness, and with the mouth one confesses, and thus has salvation. For the scripture says, Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, who richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How are they to call on one they have not believed in? And how are they to believe in one they have not heard of? And how are they to hear without someone preaching to them? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how timely is the arrival of those who proclaim the good news. But not all have obeyed the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? Consequently, faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the preached word of Christ. But I ask, have you not heard? Yes, they have. Their voice has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. But again I ask, didn't Israel understand? First Moses says, I will make you jealous by those who are not a nation. With a senseless nation I will provoke you to anger. And Isaiah is even bold enough to say, I was found by those who did not seek me. I became well known to those who did not ask for me. But about Israel, he says, all day long I held out my hands to this disobedient and stubborn people. God, I so wish that the completeness of what Paul was talking about was true. That your word had reached everybody in the world. But it hasn't. Not yet. There's approximately 7,000 different languages spoken in the world today. 6,800-ish right under 2,000, so a little bit less than a third of those, do not have a Bible that's translated into their language. What are they supposed to do? Learn English so that they can then have a Bible? Isn't that crazy? Now it's also kind of exciting that two-thirds of the world has a Bible in their language. So that's, that's awesome. But it just breaks my heart. I know that people can just look around the world and and know that there is a God. And in the Bible, of course, you talk about that in there. That even, even if they haven't received the gospel, all they have to do is look around and know that there's something bigger than them. um, And understand that. (sighs) But something I so take for granted. It's on my computer. I have stacks of Bibles right next to me. In the room behind me, I have all of my collectible Bibles. I have Bibles in my car, I have Bibles on my phone. And almost a third of the languages spoken still do not have a Bible. Mm. That absolutely breaks my heart. So when Paul says in, in verse 17, consequently, faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the preached word of Christ. We need to go. <laughs> We have been commanded to go and commanded to go and tell other people 
about how crazy awesome you are. And we talk about that a lot at Daily Video Bible because it's truly one of my favorite things to do is talk to people about you. I love telling stories about you. I love reading the Bible with people. I love praying with people. I get super excited when I get to watch you work in people's lives because I know that that's, that's not always part of your will. Um, but lately you've been giving me kind of this front row seat to see a lot of this and it's just really exciting. But my heart breaks for all those people that aren't reached. You know, people tend to want to go on, on missions to comfortable places. Places where people um, speak English or will at least understand it. Where they'll have places to sleep that resemble something like our beds. That have food that's not too weird. Or even have food at all. Um, and let's not get me started on the whole water issue. So where these almost 2,000 language people are is in all these areas where it's not fun to go to. It's not like you're going on a, on a trip and oh, by the way, you get to talk about God. All these unreached people groups that haven't heard about you, God. Because apparently our comfort is way more important than them hearing about you. Our desire to have a comfortable bed, our desire to not sleep with creepy crawly things, our desire to not have food that makes us sick, our desire to not have to walk 10 miles each day to get clean water. Our sin, our idol, our God in our world is comfort. And yet Paul says, faith comes from what is heard and what is heard comes through the preached word of Christ. I wish I knew more languages. Daily Video Bible would be in those languages. I know English and then about six words in other languages. So that, that's not very good. But I do know there's people out there working hard at getting these translations done. But we are still called to go. To go to the ends of the earth. But many of us are so fearful of even telling people in our own life about God. What will they think of me? Will I be uncomfortable? Oh, see, back to that comfort word again. God doesn't call us to be comfortable. He calls us to tell other people about him. Period. And God, I love that you have put those commands in our life. And more importantly, I know that you have put the strength in our lives to go and do that without worry, without fear, without agitation, without anxiety. Because if it's truly all about you, all of those things just take a back seat. So I'm uncomfortable. So I need to just eat rice because everything else is going to make me nauseous and make me stay in the tent. If I even get a tent. So I get over my freak outs about creepy crawly things. Although God, you, you know that I like creepy crawly things. So that's not really an issue. I guess more the poisonous ones. How about if we go that direction? God, please, I just beg you today to take away our idol of comfort. Bring in the God of the Old Testament who threw fire and brimstone <laughs> and righteous anger. You destroyed those idols in the Old Testament. Show us that we don't need those comforts. Show us that we are spoiled, rotten children. Show us that it is not all about us. Show us that it is about the people who don't have an opportunity to even hear your word in the language that they understand. God, how can we even sit here and be comfortable knowing that? How can we watch TV? How can we go hang out with friends? How can we go out to dinner? How, how can we do all those things if we know that these things are happening in the world? Oh, that's right. Someone else will take care of it. 
I don't remember seeing that in the Bible. <laughs> I remember you calling us. I remember Isaiah said, send me. And we as Christians echo that. Send me. Send me, provide me the strength, provide me the clear path that I need to see to walk wherever you want to send me in this world. You know me, God. I'm ready to go. Whatever that looks like to you. God, I just pray for everyone right now that if their heart and their life was totally open to everything you wanted them to do, can you imagine how efficient <laughs> that would be? If we just all listen to you, you'd be sending missionaries left and right all over the place. But God, we're so caught up with our God, the God and idol of comfort. I just ask that you make us really uncomfortable with that. How's that? Make us really uncomfortable with how spoiled we are. Make us really uncomfortable with the things we have in our life. The biggest blessing you ever gave to me was taking away a lot of my comfort. You took away the house I had. You took away the job I had. You took away the money I had. You took away the process for getting the money that I had. And I don't remember, honestly, ever once being angry about that. It was just such a huge blessing to keep trusting you more and more and more as my idols were taken away. It was amazing. God, I just beg you today, make us uncomfortable so that we truly begin to love the world like you do and that our heart turns outward to people who haven't even heard your name once. In your son's name I pray, amen. <laughs>